Hey guys, this is Felix from Low Power Lab, and in this video I'd like to introduce you to the new Motino Gateway user interface that I've been mentioning for a while. Here's an illustration of um, how the whole system kind of fits together. We have all kinds of uh, different nodes and sensors that wirelessly communicate with a Raspberry Pi gateway, and that has a Motino central node that actually does the RF communication with all the other Motinos that are included in each uh, of these sensors. And the gateway also has an NGINX web server and Node.js web stack that is relayed through the internet to any uh, number of connected clients. And uh, you can uh, access this interface from a smartphone, from a tablet, or from any PC or browser that can uh, access the internet. Here's a diagram that shows uh, the data flow between the client browser and the Raspberry Pi gateway. Everything is done over HTTPS and authentication is also implemented to ensure that only authorized people can access the interface. Everything goes uh, through a single pipe, so the web pages and also the WebSocket traffic is uh, forwarded by NGINX to ensure that uh, the WebSocket is not accessible and not uh, available to the public directly. So all that WebSocket traffic goes through the same pipe. The Motino is connected to the Pi through the serial port and uh, node serial is the package that can relay the serial data from the Motino to the WebSocket gateway. So let's go ahead and load the web interface and I'm running locally so all I need to do is enter the local IP address of the gateway And the very first time you load it, you might see this warning, and that's because the browser doesn't know that you used a self-signed certificate for the secure sockets layer. And it'll show you this warning, but it's completely safe to just proceed because it's your own certificate and you trust it. The next thing that happens is you get redirected to HTTPS and you see this authentication dialog. And that ensures that only you or other authorized people can access the interface. Once you click Login, you'll see the main dashboard. On the side here, I have a console that shows the output from the Node.js WebSocket script running on the Raspberry Pi. And I'll keep this here so that you can see it update as data comes in and as we interact with this interface. This is also useful for debugging. The dashboard has a list of all the currently registered nodes and their visible data metrics. Each has an icon that's determined by the node type. There's a node label or node name and a smaller text below that, uh, which you can use to specify location, uh, configuration, when the node was last deployed, things like that. Next, there's this little signal strength icon, which will update every time a packet is received from uh, that particular node. The colored label next to that shows when any data was last received from that node. It'll update interactively as time passes, and uh, it will go from green, if the node was last updated uh, under 30 seconds ago, to yellow, and gradually to orange, and then red if a long time passed since the last update. The last important element here is this bubble where the node data metrics are displayed. Any node can have any number of different metrics, but you may not care to see all of them in this main dashboard. So we will see in a minute how to control uh, the metrics visibility in this bubble. Also notice each metric is also color coded. And uh, if you hover over a particular metric, it'll show a tooltip with uh, the timestamp but unfortunately the screen capture software prevents that tooltip from displaying, but it does work. You will notice this bubble at the top and it tells us that there are actually 13 nodes in this list and that five are hidden. Uh, this list can get long so we can hide some of the less important nodes and then toggle their visibility uh, with this button right here. The search icon next to it We'll toggle this search box and this can help you filter down the list if it's too long and uh, you can find a node by searching for any description or data metric in the list. So if we type switch that will match all these nodes and uh, 
garage will match the openers and the switch. And if we type on, it'll match these nodes because either their metrics or their description has uh, the keyword on in them. Each node when clicked will open this node details page and this is where we can interact with that node or change its settings. The node type dropdown allows you to specify what kind of predefined node type this is. So picking a value here will enable certain other features on the screen and will also assign a non-generic icon in the main dashboard if one is defined for that node type. You can change the label and description for this node using these two text boxes. You can also hide this node with this visibility slider and the node will then be hidden in the main dashboard. And to get back to it, we can toggle the hidden nodes from this button here and then we can make it uh, visible again. The next section displays all the node data metrics. Each line is an individual data that is registered and updated and optionally data logged or graphed. This pin icon means that this particular metric is shown on the dashboard in the nodes metric bubble and we'll see in a second how we can enable or disable that. Then this is the metric label. This graph icon indicates this metric is also data logged in a separate database and has a graph associated with it. The colored label here is a timestamp that shows how long ago this metric was last updated. And this bubble here shows the actual value of the data metric. The next section is the node controls and in this case we have two buttons that will trigger certain actions on this node. So for instance clicking refresh will request a status update from this garage mode and then this second button will go through different states so that it can change the color, the text and even the icon depending on what's the state for the garage door. The last section is the node events and then for this node we have no events associated but we'll see some other nodes with events in just a minute. Clicking on a metric shows this metric details page and this is where you can change the uh, label for that metric and you can control the visibility of this metric in the main dashboard so if we unpin this metric from here it will not be shown for this node in the dashboard. The last section here is the graph that shows the log data in this real-time graph and you have a few controls to zoom in or out or pan or load up to a week worth of data. You can also use the graph slider to enable or disable the data logging and graph for this metric. Let's show the hidden nodes and let's go through the list and see the other types of uh, different available nodes. The first one here is the doorbell and I've just added this a couple days ago. And this has a single metric which updates whenever someone rings a doorbell. And I have this button which I can use to virtually trigger it. And then down here we have the events that are active for this uh, node. This one will play a sound in the browser whenever someone rings a doorbell or if I press this button and then the second event will send me a text message if I'm away from home and I want to know about this. So um, all these events can be registered here and it, they can temporarily be deactivated. So for instance if I just want to play the sound I can uh, click the button here and it'll play the sound in the browser so I can be alerted that someone is, is at the front door if I can't hear the doorbell. The next one is the garage opener and we've already seen this. And then we have a second garage door opener which is controlled by a separate garage mode and that only reports status. And we can also see this is graphed. Then if we load a week worth of data we can see when it was opened and closed and so on. The next one is a light switch and this is a switch mode that I have right here in the lab. It controls one of the lights and I don't really use it that often but the reason I wanted to show it is because 
it can work together with this motion sensor that is also located here in the lab. And this uh, reports two metrics. One is for motion and one is the battery level. And it also has these three events registered. One will uh, send a text message whenever motion is detected. That's disabled right now. One will play a sound here in the browser. And uh, this one will actually trigger a motion message to the switch mode, which will turn on the light temporarily. So uh, I'll go ahead and actually wave my hand in front of it right now, and it should play the sound and also turn on the light. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I played the sound, and if we go back here, this light was just turned on. Another feature of this metric is that it's graphed, so we can also see whenever a motion occurred on this motion sensor. If we wait for about a minute, uh, this lab light will uh, return to off without me actually doing anything. We then have the mailbox, and this is one of my favorites because it's really useful. It's actually modified motion mode and it reports a bunch of things. There's a weather shield in there, so it reports temperature, humidity, and pressure. And of course, it reports when the mailbox was last opened. And then there's this metric, the motion metric, which only triggers when there's motion. So this should match this computed metric. It also reports the battery level, and I have this variable in the code that um, I'm monitoring for debugging purposes. And I also have two events registered for the mailbox. I want to know uh, when it's open, so I want to play a sound here in the browser, and also I want to get a text message whenever the mailbox gets opened. If we click the motion metric, we'll see a graph of the motion events. And uh, over a week, we can see it's been opened uh, pretty much every day. The sump pump sensor is another useful node. It's a sonar mode that measures the distance between the water surface and the top of the sump pump tank. So as the water level rises, this metric decreases in value. It also reports battery voltage, and it has this event that will trigger if the water rises below a certain threshold and send me a text message. It's been raining here a bunch, and the pump is pretty active as we can see in this real-time graph. A few nights ago, during a heavy storm, the sump pump actually stopped working and this sensor captured that event as it happened and alerted me so that I can fix it and avoid a flood situation in my basement. So I was pretty happy about that and I also blogged about it. Here's the logged data showing when the pump failure actually happened. It stopped around 9.30 p.m. and this is when I fixed it in the morning and it started working again. I then have a bunch of switch mode light switches, uh, some of which are not used that often and they're kept hidden. This front door light is kept on a schedule and it turns on at night and off in the morning. The graph also logs when the light is on every day. Another set of interesting nodes are these two light switches, and they're arranged in a three-way circuit. Uh, one of them controls the actual light bulb, and the, one, the other one is just an extension. So I keep it hidden in this view because I don't need to see both, since they both are uh, controlling the same light and are synchronized. And they're also synchronized to the first button on this lab switch mode uh, via the sync feature that is baked into each switch mode and that works independently of this interface so that I can control the same one light in the circuit from either one of these three switch modes and I can physically get feedback on the front panel LEDs everywhere and also uh, the metrics get updated in this interface as well. So note that right now the light is actually on. And let me turn it off from this button here on the lab switch mode. And that will update everywhere. 
So both of these are now off. I could of course just push the physical button and it would have the same effect everywhere. Finally, there's the wattmeter node, which uses a photoreflective sensor to read visual pulses from my wattmeter, and it reports these three metrics. An accumulating gallon count, uh, gallons per minute when water is actively flowing, and also gallons last minute uh, when water is actively flowing as well. Only gallons per minute is graphed. And in this graph, we can see when water was actually used and at what flow volume. One feature I didn't show yet is the raw log page and that's accessible from this icon. Here you can see logging data sent from the WebSocket script and that's useful when you debug or add new features. This log text will be kept trimmed so it doesn't get too long and you can clear it manually from this button. This other button will show a little dialog where you can type a message and send it to a certain node. So for instance, let's turn on this lab light. We need the node ID and that's 23. So let's go back here and let's turn that light on and a message to do that is btn1 colon 1. If I click send that'll reflect in here in the console and also the interface will show that metric as on and also the control associated with that will be updated. If I want to send another message I can turn that light off by changing that last one to zero and that will shut that light off. In this section I want to show you how easy it is to add a brand new sensor or a brand new node to the interface and for this I have a three button switch mode that I just plugged into USB to get power for this demo and this didn't talk to the gateway yet so the gateway doesn't know about its existence. So uh, switch modes have predefined matching expressions and also predefined controls and some predefined sample events that we can actually demo. So to make this show up in the interface, all I have to do is press the button and it will immediately show up as a brand new generic node with a generic icon and the label will just be the node ID. If we click that, we will see the metric that was actually matched. It's just the B1 button and the status is on. Now we can pick the type as light switch and that will enable the control that's associated with this metric. And that's again predefined in the definition uh, for the switch modes. To actually make the other two buttons show up, all we have to do is press them and they will immediately get registered as well and get tracked. Now let's turn them all off from the interface. And uh, let's add some events. All switch modes can be turned on, for instance, at 8 p.m. and turned off at 6.45 a.m. And those are just some sample events that I've uh, predefined and you can make your own. Uh, you can change times and uh, change those events as you like. If we click the B1 metric, you'll notice that has a graph icon that actually logs when the switch mode has turned on and off so you can see when lights were on and uh, this is only done by default for B1 you can enable it for the other two buttons but uh, usually uh, the light is attached to the relay that is on button number one if we want to delete a node because it was um, disconnected or you don't use that node anymore, so you don't want to see it in the interface. You just click delete, and that'll delete it from the database and from this interface. So it'll be gone. As soon as uh, you do something else, plug that node back in, it'll show up again because uh, the gateway will match a metric and it'll register the node and the metric as well. Another important feature of this interface is being able to track changes in real time 
over multiple clients. So I have my PC browser with the interface loaded here and also have my mobile phone with uh, the interface loaded in its own browser. And I will show you how I can interact with, um, say, the doorbell. It has this control which will actually trigger the doorbell and um, I have these two events, a sound that will play as soon as that happens and also a text message that is sent to this mobile phone uh, when someone uses the, the doorbell. So let's go ahead and try this. So the sound plays both in the browser and also on the mobile phone. And also a text message is uh, received right away as soon as I uh, click this button or as soon as someone uses the doorbell. And finally, if I look at the ring metric, I can actually see when the doorbell was used in, uh, in this graph. I can look at this uh, over time, I can zoom in, I can uh, zoom out, I can pan and uh, get a clear view when my doorbell was uh, used. This wraps up this overview of the new gateway interface and we could probably go into a lot more detail but for now this is sufficient. Uh, the code will be released soon and you can give it a try yourself. Uh, this is a work in progress and so I encourage you to report any bugs and contribute with ideas to make it better. I hope you enjoyed this update and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you later!